Welcome to Holly Terminator X Training Part 4. In this video, we're going to be doing a full software overview so we can find all the hidden features and functions within our software. If we want to be proficient and being able to utilize all the different things that we have in our Terminator X system, we have to know how to use the software. So we're going to be focusing on that in this video. We did a very brief software overview in our very first video. This is going to be much more in depth. I'll cover a lot more details. So let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look, doing a software overview here in our Terminator X software. In our very first video, we learned how to download and install our Terminator X software onto our laptop. We did a very brief software overview. So we just skimmed over the software to get familiar with it. Now we're gonna do a bit more in-depth look at the software so we know exactly what to expect and where to find things within the software. We're able to use it more efficiently during our calibration process, which is really, really important the more time that you can save, the more time you can actually spend calibrating and looking through your data logs, doing the things that are actually important. The software is pretty intuitive, but there are some things that are kind of hidden here, and some of the features and functions may not make sense, so I'm gonna walk through how to work with everything. So the very first thing we're gonna do is jump up here into File. We find some options here. Create New Global File, Open Global File, Import Global File. Now let's talk about our first option here, Create New Global File. Now, what I have open at this point in my software right here, we can see at the very top it tells us the file name. This is the 24x MPFI LS file. This is from our base global file folder under the LS engine. So this is the, uh, the file that's actually associated with the box and the harness that I'm working with in this particular training course. Um, so if I jump into a table here, if I go to something like my base fuel, this populates the table. We have values in our base fuel table. This is gonna allow the vehicle to run. It's gonna be approximate what you need to have in the table to uh, fuel the engine and open and close the fuel injectors to deliver the fuel into the actual engine. If we take a look at our target air fuel table, that's populated with some kind of a value. If we're looking at our startup enrichment tables, these have some kind of a value in them. If I wanna start off with a scratch file, I don't wanna go in and start off with anything that Holly has populated already, I can actually do that using that option here. So it's gonna be essentially turning everything back to zeros We'll find we have to go in and actually populate all the tables and all the settings to make sure our engine's actually going to run. So if we go here under File and under Create New Global File, we're going to find is if I click that option, we can see a whole bunch more icons appear here on the screen. It's going to be bringing all of the features and functions that we can work with in the software and turning them on. We can then remove them, but more importantly here, it's resetting everything. It's starting off with all zeros. If we look at our base fuel table, it's now zeros. Before it had some values in it, Again, those were associated with how much fuel demand we wanted to have delivered into the engine. They are gonna be essentially translating themselves into an injector pulse with the pulse the injectors to add the fuel. At this point, if we have a value of zero, it's not gonna run the engine. It's not gonna allow the injector to actually do anything. If we're taking a look at something like our spark timing table, we look at our based spark timing values. This would be what we command for the spark timing. We see this is all zero as well. So we don't have any spark timing within our table. So essentially I've started over again and I've eliminated that previous file that I had in there. If we're taking a look at the top, we're seeing it's called Terminator X8 is the default name that it's calling itself. So um, this will essentially allow us to start over again and start off with a fresh base file. Most of the time we're not going to do this, but sometimes if you have a custom application you're working with in your Terminator X, you might find that it's easier just to start off with a completely new file rather than going in and editing and modifying something that's existing. So let's go here, our next option here is a file. Open global file, we've talked about this. This allows us to open the actual files. We have our project folders within our global file folders. We're gonna be saving our project names. We also have a base cal that's gonna allow us to access all of the base calibration files from Holly within our directory here. We've talked about this already. Let's click cancel. Now the next option is important, file, import global file. By allowing ourselves to import a global file, if we have, let's say, a file that's blank here, we're starting with a fresh file, we can bring attributes from another file, such as our fuel tables, maybe our ignition timing tables. We can import very specific tables or the entire calibration and bring it into this existing calibration that we're creating as a fresh calibration file. So let's go and demonstrate that real quick. So again, our Terminator X8 is the file that we have open here. If we go to File and we go here to Import Global File, we can see it's gonna ask us which file we wanna work with and inherit, inherit the attributes from so um, in this case, let's say EPA training example one, maybe I wanna go in and bring my fuel and ignition timing tables only from my, let's say example changes one file. 
Let's just assume this is going to be easy again. We're just hyping. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.